Hello, everyone, and welcome to a most special and blessed day. May 25th, Star Wars Day, the real Star Wars Day for all of you non-believers. Glenn, Star Wars Day was weeks ago. It was 21 no, it was days not. ago. It what, was are you, not. what are you talking about? We all said May the 4th. Well, May the 4th is a made-up holiday. We all know that May 25th is the real Star Wars Day because that is when Episode 4, A New Hope, aired at Man's Chinese Theater on May 25th, 1977. Mm, there it is, folks, right there. The Great Schism. I am Glenn Kyle uh, at the Northeast Georgia History Center. I grew up on Star Wars. And as with the last three years, I have with me Mr. Matt House, another Star Wars believer, aficionado, fan. Grew up on it. Really can't remember a time that I wasn't watching them. Ever. Like, we little one. Yeah. 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 I can because it didn't exist for the first four and a half years of my life. But Well, yeah. Those were the dark times. Those were the dark times. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so we are here um, setting up, getting together, and we this year have decided to take a special look at what seems to be the absolute center of the Star Wars universe. Not Absolutely. Coruscant, not the middle of the galaxy. Tatooine. Now, why did we pick Tatooine now, and why, even though the previous years we've done it on the 4th, why are we doing it on the 25th this year? Other than just to show everybody uh, that they're wrong right. about, <laughs> st- about, about what, what day is Star Wars Day. If you're, if you're a, a, I'm, an, I'm going to answer the question. Yeah, answer the ask question. <laughs> tell me, why did we pick today? I'll tell you. Um, if you're a, a big, if you're a, you know, uh, I'm not going to judge you on the level of Star Wars fandom that, that you are, but if you're, a, if you're a big fan, you probably know in two days, uh, Obi-Wan's coming out. It's going to be a, a limited series, and uh, spoiler alert, it will probably, it maybe exclusively, I don't know, largely take place on Tatooine. It'll Correct. certainly in there, Seems I Seems to me, yes. yes. And perhaps we should say this up front. Uh, this episode, as we continue to talk about things, is going to be full of Spoiler! So if you haven't seen Book of Boba Fett and you haven't seen The Mandalorian and, and if you're not up to date on the things that have been released, fair warning. We'll try to minimize the spoiler, but it will, you know, inevitably. It's, it's going to yeah, be it's, there. It's, it's going to come up. It's going to be there. All right, so we're on a desert planet. Yeah, uh, I wanted to say something uh, about the, the, the two sons behind us. Uh, those two sons have names. <gasps> Tattoo <laughs> One and Tattoo Two. <laughs> Which is why this planet is called Tatooine, because it's in the tattoo system, and that's how Star Wars works. There's usually the stars usually have names, right? Right, right. And the planets are usually numbered. So like Yavin is the fourth moon. I don't know. The fourth, it, yeah, the fourth moon around the planet of Yavin in the Yav system. Yeah. Right. Now, one of the things we talk about, we're going to talk about though, is how the background of all this has expanded, right? Yes. In 1977, Tatooine was just a desert planet. Yeah. And I remember when the novelization came out, those suns were called, this is very creative, G1 and G2. Oh, Tattoo's a little more... It's a little more fits with the... I wonder how they thought that up after... uh, I don't know. But, you know, Tatooine is a desert planet, and, and Lucas understands that a lot of epics have taken place in the desert, right? Science fiction, there is Dune, there's Arrakis. That is a very popular science fiction. Do you and know roughly when Dune came out? Maybe 10 years the, before? The book or, or the, the movie? Book. Oh, the, no, the book was has been out since late 60s, early 70s. Okay. I guess yeah. that was 10 years. Yeah, about, 77, about 10 years. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, and, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of movies uh, in the golden age of Hollywood were set in the desert. The most notable is Lawrence of Arabia. That's just... A place with a lot of sand seems to be the place to set an epic. I haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia. I've been working on that. So uh, uh, we'll, I'll see. Well, that's not that. what today is about, Matt. That's not what today is about. Oh, we got some talk in the chat already. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> uh, is, is it, uh, hold on. So is Jabba's Palace actually a secret tattoo parlor? We're going to get uh, to Jabba's we'll, we'll Palace and what it actually is. Right. So yes, we're going to answer that question. I will say it's not a tattoo parlor, but we're going to get there. Right. Um, the, okay, so yeah, the setting, uh, Luke, there's a line Luke says uh, when C-3PO says, I'm not sure what planet we're on. He says, what does he say, Glenn? Luke? Yeah, what does Luke He says, him? well, if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's furthest from. Okay, so that's, and that's interesting. Uh, uh, 
if we could get the next slide, I'm gonna. Uh, so I I picked this map. It's a little strangely shaped, uh, but this is a population map of the galaxy. You can, no surprise, where it's red is where everybody lives, and when it's really white, it's where everybody lives. Um, mm -hmm. If we could see the next slide, if you'll look. I can't show the whole big thing, but uh, that little arrow points to Tatooine, and Right, While it's right over there, it's not the farthest from the brightest spot in the center of the galaxy. <laughs> it is pretty far, and you don't see any red or green there. There's not a lot of people that live there compared to everywhere else. Because it's a desert. So Luke was right, but why, why, why? If it's so nowhere, why does everything seem to happen here? Everything happens here. Space magic. Yeah, I'm trying storytelling. To, if right? I can think, so they go there in four. They don't go there in five. They go there in six. Mm -hmm. They're episode one, they're there. Episode right. two, they're there. I don't think they go there in episode three. I can't recall, do you? No, they do. They, they, they do. Okay. I think so. Yes, yes, yeah. because yes, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember. I know they go there in the Disney films at some point, at least once. Yes, yes. I think so. And then Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett. Book Boba Fett. We spent a lot of time on Tatooine. Um, where is Tatooine in the galactic scheme of things, Glenn? It's in the Outer Rim. It's in the Outer Rim. If we can see this next picture, we'll see of... So this is just the part of the galaxy that is the Outer Rim. Everything that you can actually make out something, that's the Outer Rim. Yeah. The Outer Rim is basically the part of the galaxy that was settled last by hyperspace travelers. Because you start in the middle, because that's where the most suitable places to, to live are. Mm -hmm. And then you work your way out. Yeah, so some some of the beings in the galaxy figured out how to do hyperspace travel. Some of them didn't. And Tatooine is a planet where some people lived, uh, but most of the people that are there now didn't live there. Mm -hmm. And it was settled much later. Uh, I don't have a slide for this, but I have a little timeline I'm going to go over. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, all right, so in real life we use... Uh, because of historical tradition, we use the birth of Christ as year zero in, in the real world. And Star right. Wars, what's the what's the equivalent to that? The Battle of Yavin seemed that the events that take place at the end of the first Star Wars movie. When they, they destroy the first Death Star. Right. The, yeah. For some reason that seems to be I'm not sure who came up with that, but it's handy. It's handy because that way you can just sort of set everything going forward or back. Yeah, it's like the beginning of the end of the Empire. Right. It's and it's 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 either uh, BBY before the Battle of Yavin or after the Battle of Yavin? ABY. So, Tatooine, uh, this, it, it used to be covered in water, but that's not really been said very much about, other than that that's a true fact. That, that, yeah, they, they mentioned that in Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, there's no recorded, there's no, I mean, it, it's all made up, so they could make up, sure. a, but uh, <laughs> there's no, it seems even in the world of Star Wars, a fact that's forgotten to time. Right. Um, the f so, Tatooine, people live there, like I said. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. I have slides for that. Right. But th th there were creatures that lived there. But as far as hyperspace people traveling and doing anything there, about 4,000 years before the first movie came out, uh, that's when the first people showed up. They mm -hmm. weren't, no one successfully settled it until about 700 years before the events of the first movie. The first settlers were a group of monks. Mm -hmm. um, they built a temple there, and it was the first permanent s settlement structure, pro and probably the oldest remaining structure there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get back to the temple in just a second. All right. Six hundred years later, some miners showed up. And M I N E R S. Yeah, M I N E R S. <laughs> yes. Good point. <laughs> And that was like the first real settlement, people moving there and bringing equipment. Right. You know, the monks were kind of kind of a one-off. And they, they went there specifically to rec recuse themselves from the rest of civilization, right? Yeah, they, they picked wanted, it because nobody wanted was hermits. around. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, about 45 years after the miners arrived, Jabba the Hutt showed up. And he thought, wow, that temple looks great. I'd love to live there. And he moved in. But the monks didn't move out. You've pro oh, I should have got a picture of that. Oh, all right. That's very tolerant of a crime lord to let the monks keep hanging out. If you, you'll see them. If you watch any of the scenes in Jabba's palace or 
I won't spoil who, right. who, who who moves into the palace after Jabba, but you'll see these little spider look. They look like droids. And there's one in the original Return of the Jedi. This yeah. is not a post fact yeah. something that they CG'd in. They put it there, yeah. and it's this little. You've probably never even paid attention to it. It's this little. It just scurries across the screen. And there's a jar that's sort of at the base of the uh, spider-looking droid. The jar is the monk. They're they're like right. gooey brain stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they just. They wanted to get rid of their physical bodies and they... Become a totally mental creature, yeah. Yeah, and they're pretty good roommates with Jabba the Hutt, apparently. <laughs> right. uh, and they just get to stick around. Um, so, yeah. All right, so let's get to the... Who, who lived there? Who lived there? Let's get to that next slide. Yeah. All right, so you, we've all seen this. What is that, Glenn? That is a sand crawler. And who, who do we see hanging out by the sand crawler? The Jawas. Jawas. Jawas are some. Jawas were are indigenous uh, creatures to this planet. Uh, they, they they are they lived here before anybody else did. Um, the sand crawler is leftovers from the miners showing up. They brought this all this equipment there, and they just left it. And Jawas, being the scavengers they are, <laughs> they learn how to use it, which is pretty amazing. They right. just figured it out, and they uh, pretty handy, they, crafty. They comb the desert for metal stuff. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's see some more. I think uh, we got some more pictures of Jawa scavenging. Um, so it's scavenging an X, was it XB38? Uh, I Looks think. like it, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Because um, a lot of stuff's going to crash into and break down in the desert. Yeah, and they'll just, uh, you know, anything that's not bolted down, they're going to try to take it. Right. Um, <laughs> as, as 3PO refers to them, oh, disgusting creatures. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. They're. Uh, they seem to, any time they show up in a video game, they have an ion weapon. That's kind of like their right. thing because they use one one time in the movie. Right. Uh, uh, the ion gun is the thing that he shoots R2 with, or that they shoot R2 right. with. Right. It, 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 it sort of pauses electrical impulses. So electronic things, it totally shuts them off. And living things, it goes, oh, it's like a, you know, it's like a taser. It's great if you steal droids and sell them to other people. Right. Um, <laughs> All right, but they weren't the only uh, indigenous residents of this place. We also had, next slide, sand people. Let's talk about sand people for a minute. Yeah. Um, so uh, Sometimes called Tuscan Raiders. Why are they called Tuscan because Raiders? Because they've got one? tusk on their face and they raid things. Ooh, I've heard a different version of this. Oh, story. yeah? Yes. Okay, so, uh, so if you, you might think of Tuscan, you might think of sand people as the term of dignity. Tuscan is what the colonials would call Is that it. a pejorative? Yes. Perhaps. Yes. yes. So there was this place called Fort, Tux Fort, Fort Tuscan, and the Tuscans overran it and conquered it one day, and I guess the, uh, the settlers never forgot about Why it. Why do indigenous peoples always think they can stop people from, other people from moving in? Yes. Uh, and you know, and it, it has been argued that the sand people in the original movie were kind of stand-ins for, you know, if you go to see an old Western, there's Native Americans right. that, that are like the scary others, like... Well, yeah. And yeah, yeah, and they kind of fit that bill for in, in this in this world. You don't see their face. Uh-huh. You don't see the Jawa's face. Yes. So, it's, and, you know, they... Now, one of the interesting things, though, is that these two indigenous people from Tatooine, the Jawa's and the Sand People slash Tusken Raiders, uh, were some of the very first action figures made. So they, they hold a place. The, when they came out with action figures, the first set of 12, and they were two of them. I have a, I'm, I'm just going to brag a little bit. Yeah, let's yeah. see. Yeah, let, 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 let's see the next. Uh, oh, yeah, so this is his gaffy stick. Oh, yeah. but yeah, that's fine. There's another gaffy stick in this picture. Right. That's the, the, the weapon of choice, the traditional weapon, as we've learned more about if you've watched Boba right. Fett. I've got a friend, speaking of Jawas, I'll go back to Jawas for a second. Yeah. I've got a friend uh, who is watching this right now who worked at Disney World, and she got to play a job. As, yeah, really? Pretty cool. That yeah. is cool. Yeah. That is cool. Uh, so but she still thinks? Yeah. Nice. Or she would give things. Yeah, she, she, she had a whole thing. She's got stories about okay. it. Um, <laughs> we should have had her as a guest. But, uh, <laughs> right. uh, so, yeah, and here's, here, here's Boba Fett. Spoiler alert. He hangs out with some sand people, believe it or not. Uh, if you watch one episode, you'll see this. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and it's, it's such an interesting transition from... You know, episode four up to Book of Boba Fett because it humanizes the 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 Sand People are totally shifted. Yes, from I mean, well, they remain faceless, but the other 
yeah. right, to a sympathetic people that Boba Fett's trying to, to live. And, and that happened in Mandalorian, too, right? One of the episodes of Mandalorian. Yeah, so, so there's a, a, a thing that Star Wars does. I have this theory about Star Wars is the way that it makes, you know, there's a lot of, like, guns, pew, 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 people dying a lot. Um, the way it sort of massages the violence, apart from the fact that they're not bullets, they're lasers, right. is typically people that die pretty indiscriminately, you don't see their faces. Or right. people that you're not supposed to care about, you know, like stormtroopers, you don't see their faces. Same people, you don't see their faces. Uh, something kind of shifted in Star and uh, Also, Vader, he's the big bad guy. Right. When he becomes good, if, if this is a spoiler for you, then I'm sorry, you shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> but when, when he becomes good, he asks Luke to take off his mask. I want to see you with my own eyes. Right. So it, it's this. And you finally see his face. You finally see his face. And he doesn't look like James Earl Jones. Um mm. In Mandalorian, because look, this is a show about a character who wears a mask most of the time. Right. Coincidentally, he has humanity. He's not somebody that we don't care about. He's got a mask on. He's the lead. Yeah. <laughs> the Sand People, when we meet them on this show, they have humanity now, too. Right. He, he, and he know, he's actually the one that, that, that he sets, sets that, that up. Yeah. yeah, he sets that up. But it's so, it's so interesting because the franchise has done a lot to make the, the Sand People... Real people, yeah, right? and sympathetic, noble characters. Jawas are still trash. <laughs> ja yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they, if anything, all they got were some jokes and some. They of the, got yeah. some jokes. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Jawas. I, 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 I have I a think, soft spot. For I think they're cool, but it's, it's so cool. funny how you know, noblized. Still, still, yeah. Still, I don't know. Nah. <laughs> uh, oh, let's talk a little bit about Banthas. I read. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's get this next slide of the Banthas. Uh, uh, Banthas are native creature, uh, and I, I was actually reading this like literally just last night. Ban so um, this didn't come up in Book of Boba Fett or Mandalorian, but um, something I read is that when you come of age as a sand person, whether you're male or female, they give you a Bantha that matches your, your sex. Mm -hmm. And when you find a partner for life, your Bantha is partners with your partner's Bantha Aww. for life, which is pretty that's sweet. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I think that's... And the fact that that didn't come up in that show, that, that gives them humanity. I don't know who came up with that, but yeah, that's pretty that's cool. I neat. like that's that. That's kind of neat. But, you know, they do kind of hint at it in Book of Boba Fett because he gets pretty close to his Bantha. Yes, he does. Yeah, he gets yeah, really close yeah. to his Bantha. Uh, oh, you know what? We've actually transitioned. We're not talking about same people. We're actually talking about the wildlife of Tatooine. Oh, yes. But I picked this picture because Banthas are native. The fauna, and, yes. And they have this close relationship with this indigenous people, and I just think that's kind of cool. Um, let's get this next slide of... Uh, Glenn, you can say a little bit about this. Dewbacks. Yeah, so the, so the dewback, this one, this image is from the, uh, the new versions. Uh, yeah. Because you can see... The, the original series, series, the original movie had a dewback for about five seconds that was literally just a built prop, and they had a lever to move its head back and forth. You didn't even see the whole thing. And, yeah, and I didn't even remember that. I did like I, I was coming across, and I was, and, I, and it said original. But I was like original. Bantha, he wasn't in the original one. And then I was like, yeah, he, yeah. there he is. The <laughs> dewbacks are there, and, <laughs> and, and, and as you said, it was just enough screen time to sell a toy. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> But yeah, I don't have, I didn't have a do back. I never got a do back. Uh, but they do, and, and you know, you could put the figure on them. Stormtroopers, of course, because stormtroopers uh -huh. are apparently the only ones that ever ride a do back. Which is another thing. It's like, wait a second, did they? So they, the, the stormtroopers showed up. Did they buy do backs? <laughs> like they probably took them. And why are they not on speeder bikes or something? Yeah. <laughs> you know why? You know why? It's a toy. Because do backs are cool. Yeah, do backs are I want, cool. I want a stormtrooper riding a giant desert lizard. Yes. And I'm yes. George Lucas, so that's what we're going to do. All right. It's going to have to make sense. Do, that's all we have to say about <laughs> do backs. Let, 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 let's move on to uh, the next uh, 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 creature, the crate dragon, which mm -hmm. we saw a lot. A lot of on Mandalorian. Mandalorian, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, crate dragons have been alluded to. They've been talked about. They haven't been seen on screen. Right. That's the that's, the that's the noise that Obi Wan, excuse me, Ben Kenobi, yes, makes to, to drive the sand people off yeah. when they're when they're ram, ransacking Luke's speeder. They don't explain that, but evidently that that sa that sound that he makes to 
to frighten the sand people away, because who, who wouldn't be frightened of this, is a lesser crate dragon. A small one. This image is a greater crate <laughs> dragon. It's a big, big bad boy. Um, but even though you've never seen a crate dragon in the flesh before this, if we go to the next slide, you did see this mm -hmm. Guy in the desert. Um, this was the remains of a crate dragon that they see. Right, which I always thought was one of the coolest things. Yeah. As they're walking, you know, this is when uh, C3PN R2D2 crash onto the planet yeah. and they're just trying to make their way through the desert and they're passing this gigantic snake looking skeleton. Yeah, not and, explained. And, not explained. You're just like, whoa, what is that? And then and then it, the scene moves on. Yeah. But yeah. it's like little details like that that, yeah. that everyone's built on. Very cool, very cool. Glad glad we finally got to see him. Uh, so this next, so let's move on to our next image, one of the most uh, iconic moments in Return of the Jedi. It's a, it's a place and a creature. The, right. The great pit of Carcoon, home of the... The Sarlacc. Sarlacc. Uh, we could, you could call it the Sarlacc pit, but... It, it's the Sarlacc that lives in, in the Great Pit of Carcassonne. That it made. That it made. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and this is, we, we. if you've watched Boba Fett, you learn quite a bit about uh, this guy. I, you've seen, you, you've, if you haven't seen Return of the Jedi, what are you doing watching this? Right. Uh, uh, Boba Fett falls in, presumably dies. The fact that they had a show about Boba Fett, this shouldn't be a spoiler. They right. Don't, he didn't die. <laughs> he didn't, he doesn't die. He doesn't die, and we get to see a, a very grueling uh, him yeah. finding his way out of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but... Cool, cool monster. I just, I love, yeah. I, I love the Sarlacc. It was always this uh, and, a favorite thing. And there, there was something funny I saw recently. So again, a little spoiler. Um, in Book of Boba Fett, the Sarlacc wrestles with an actual spaceship. The spaceship tries to get close to it. And the Sarlacc reaches up with its tentacles and starts pulling this ship down. And the ship is like, trying to get out of there, right? Uh -huh. Well, in Return of the Jedi, the Sarlacc reaches up gets a hold of Lando and tries to pull him down and has trouble doing it. <laughs> so someone said that proves that if if it could if it could hold a spaceship down but it couldn't get Lando down there, canonically that makes Lando the strongest character in the entire Star Wars universe. <laughs> Pretty good. That's pretty good. You do it, Lando. Maybe he's got weaker tentacles. Maybe, maybe, maybe he was. Yeah, maybe he yeah. was tired that day. He I don't knows. Know. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement <laughs> going on. You know, we'll cut him some slack. Uh, next one. It's kind of a throwaway creature. That uh, this is an. This is this purports to be an image of a of a womp rat. However, right. Glenn. I don't. I've never. We've never seen one. We never see a In womp a movie, rat. They talk anything. about. When do they bring up the womp? They rat? want to shoot them. Yes, that's, that's how you prove your marksmanship on Tatooine is you shoot womp rats. Yes, uh, Luke says uh, they're they're having their little uh, how we're going to blow this thing up meeting about the Death Star, and somebody's like, we can't shoot this exhaust port. It's two meters wide. He's like, oh, we used to bullseye womp rats and their T-16s back home. They're not much bigger than two meters. Yeah, let's so, see. Yeah, let, let, yeah, let's go to this next. So it's slide. a six-foot rat. Yeah, we know that. <laughs> This is the, so he says that I used to bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home. This is a T-16 Skyhopper. Uh, Look at the giant gun on the bottom. Yeah, it's got a big gun. Well, it's, a, it's a six foot long rat. Big, yeah, bigger than it probably Rodents needs to be. Rodents of unusual size. It's probably related to the rats in Princess Bride. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, just... We don't see this ship. I mean, he says that he has one and his buddies, they fly him around. We do see it. We see, well, we, we see him... He's got. If well, I, I'll let you see. No, no. It's it, it, when he's when he's wishing he could be somewhere else, and our, and C three PO is taking his bath. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. has a little toy that he's flying around like this. That's what it is. That's the T sixteen. Yeah. Did you? You know what? You weren't. You were too old for this era. But when I was a kid, um, something that you probably would have loved is micro machines were. Uh, big. Yeah, I remember the micro machines. The micro machines, and then they they had a Star Wars contract. And right. just like, so, you know, before, if you wanted a ship, it would probably be something you'd spend a lot of money right. on. Right. Suddenly, Micro Machines, the ships were, were 10 bucks. like this big, yeah. Yeah, and I had a T-16 Skyhopper. Cool. Yeah, I had, and I, it was just very cool. Did you pull out Womp Rats? Didn't come with Womp Rats. Head. It should have. But it did, it did have, <laughs> the, the gun on the bottom, they would use, they would oftentimes have like a little, like you press a button, it pew, you know, oh, shoots yeah. a little thing. Yeah. It came with one of those. Cool. It was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I love I love me some micro machines. I don't. They went out of business. They they, they don't have. I micro still machines got. Anymore. I still have a few Star Wars and Star Trek micro machines. I had some Star Trek house. ones yeah. too. Yeah. Um, I always was very. Uh, we're, 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 yeah, we're a little off topic, but I was always. 
When I was a kid and there were micro machines, I, I was always like, why aren't there Star Wars Legos? Why aren't there Star Wars Legos? Why aren't there Star Wars Legos? And then finally, there were. Now that's all there is, is yeah, Star Wars it, Legos. It took a long time for there to be Star Wars Legos, because I remember like when I was a kid, why aren't there Star Wars Legos? I, yeah. I would have to use my sci-fi Legos and pretend they were Star Wars. Slightly related fact, Lego, the company, was about to go bankrupt yes. again. Yeah, oh, again. A again. Okay. They, they had been having some struggles because with the advent of, of you know different things, who wants just basic square building blocks? They decided to get a license to create Star Wars Legos, and it is the, that license and start the creation of Star Wars Lego sets that turned that company around and made it into the giant that it has become. And that's, that's all because I wanted it as a kid. Thanks, Matt. And they put it out there. <laughs> and right. you know, they haven't contacted me to thank me yet, but you know, they're like, Matt, you know. It's because you wrote the letter in English, and they needed it in uh, Dan it Danish? 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, next, it, so next we're gonna kind of be talking about uh, people we meet in the can the cantina. I mean, that's like yeah. The, let's talk about the cantina. It's the big set piece of that movie, and it really it tells us a lot about tattooing, but it also really just I don't know if if if, if uh, it, it's all, what, what's that Greek god that, that sprouts from someone's forehead? It almost feels oh, that's like, the, yes, that's Athena spouting fully formed from Zeus's head. It, yeah, it really feel like this was the moment where the the Star Wars just sort of just erupts from the movie. I mean, like, right. the, yeah, we had it, you know, like there's a good, it's almost an hour before this, but like it's like the the middle of the movie, and it's just this huge moment, right? And it, it's just, I mean, but. Dramatically, not the most important moment, but visually, there had been nothing like it. Right? Yeah, this yeah. Is, and this is Lucas had when he started with Star Wars. There were two ideas he started with at the very beginning: a space battle, which we get at the <laughs> end, and this cantina scene where he wanted it. Fit. He basically wanted Rick's cafe from Casablanca, full of. Refugees and and people down on their luck and people trying to get out and scum and villainy, <laughs> but in space. And he wanted as many different alien-looking crazy creatures as he could get crammed in to this scene. And when you go back and you read some of the original reviews from '77, every reviewer mentions this scene. Yeah, they're like, well, this is the most wow. This is amazing. Could we go back to the previous image for a moment? So, uh, uh, Glenn. Talk about uh, the this book. Yeah, so when we watched, you know, um, A New Hope the first time, we were amazed by this. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it wasn't a pivotal. It, it's pivotal because he meets Han Solo and Chewbacca, and in a way, all these aliens are almost background. That's how they were in the movie. And even when the toys came out, right? They were they wanted to sell cool alien toys, and so because there wasn't a lot of background you didn't get even names, right? Mm -hmm. you, this was this guy, this is Hammerhead, and Walrus Man, and Snaggletooth, right? That's the marketing, and, and they were incredibly unique little figures. Well, as time goes by, they start kind of pulling names out for him. We've got Greedo. Greedo gets a name because he he's, he's mentioned in the, you yeah. know, he's mentioned in the movie. Um, but, as in the literal dark times after Return of the Jedi, um, <laughs> people want more Star Wars. And so people start to write books. This is called the Expanded Universe, for those of you who, who may not have followed this. And, and tons of books came out. One of the best-selling books of that entire Expanded Universe universe is something called A Tales from the Most Isley Cantina. And this is the time where they started, this entire book is going through all those people that pop up on screen and giving a story about why each one of them is there. And it is fascinating. And you start getting names, right? So this isn't Hammerhead anymore. This oh, is... He's a slide, so we'll get to Oh, that. yeah, okay, we'll get to Okay. Um, he's not a slide. Is, is he a slide? Yes, he's a slide. Okay, well, why don't, why don't we just get... So, so I, I want to say one more thing before yeah, we yeah, move on yeah. from this picture. If you notice, this is a new cover of this book. Right. At the top, it says, Legends. Right. Do you know what that means, Glenn? That means that they have, this book was so well received and they made these figures, 
or the characters became such a part of Star Wars canon, they entered Legends. That's not my understanding of yeah, it. Yeah, My understanding, and, and may, maybe I should have fact-checked this before, but my, my, so my understanding of it is, is that when they wanted to label something as non-canonical, uh -huh. they'll call it Legends. I wonder if this was. I wonder if this cover comes from post Disney acquisition. That's what I'm thinking. Is that maybe okay. it is? So, um, so a lot of the stuff that we're about to tell you, once the if someone decides to make a movie about some of these characters, all that's all this stuff might just go out the window. Right. <laughs> because you know, uh, as an example, I, I, I own this book. It was published in 2009. It was a, a an Atlas of the Galaxy. Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Pretty cool. In fact, the the images that that I opened with of the galaxy were from mm -hmm. that book. Um, there's a, an article in there about the planet Corellia, which is where Han Solo is from, which we see in the Han Solo movie. Right. Corellia is described in this book as a beautiful <laughs> forest, beautiful right. place. It's Na Naboo-esque. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, when they were making the movie, they are like, oh, you know what, Han Solo needs to be from somewhere that kind of... Gritty and industrial. Garbage. Yeah. Uh, so they're <laughs> like, you know what, Corellia is a terrible place. And so, you know, it's, you know, like... Things shift. Yeah, we, we can't we can't expect these writers to keep up with all the you know it's just too much. If something needs to change, that's okay. It's going to change. Mm -hmm. So if, if it's been in the movie, it has to stay the way it is. But yeah, more or less. If it was on a book, it's flexible. Right, right, right. right. So that being said, uh, <laughs> let's go into the cantina. One of the first things that we see. Oh, did you have anything that you want? Uh, oh well, before we go to the cantina, okay. I want to just remind everyone: no droids. No droids. That's right. Uh, to our first image uh, is you. It's never explained what this device is, but what, as they walk inside, they walk past it. If you see this th this thing with this blue light on it, no, 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 no. Yeah, that is a droid detector. That is something that. Although it's funny, why would you need it? Because you just look at them and they're, yeah. they're very clearly droids. But he, <laughs> they really wanted to be sure that that droids couldn't come into this place. Right. And. Uh, it's funny if you go to the next image when they made a uh, the bartender's name is Wu Har, Wu Hair. I didn't I didn't give him a full slide because he's human, uh, you know. Uh, but the guy behind the bar, no droids. The toy of him comes with the detector, which is so <laughs> funny. I was like, what? They, did they need to? <laughs> but, yes. Yes. But yeah, it's they're they're uh, two peas in a pod. Look, he had one line, okay? Yeah. Well, he he also just. Oh yeah, yeah, he does that too. Um, like a good bartender. Yeah, it's funny. I feel like he looks a little scruffy enough that, like, I was like, is he an alien or is he just a human? He's just a human. He's a scruffy I human. Checked. Yeah. Uh, uh, he is not the owner. He's not the owner of the bar. I looked. At, I just assumed that he probably yeah. was. Apparently, this place has a name, Chalman's Cantina. Chalman is a Wookie. He owns this place. He bought it. it used to be a place where people would. Illegally use spice, and he cleaned oh. it up and turned it into this fine establishment. People just get drunk and shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, it's funny. You say it's like Rick's. Rick's is a much classier place than the Mos Eisley Cantina, I will say. It, yeah, it, well, yes. People that's, die that's in there, but yeah. it's classier than this oh, place. Oh, that's true. That's say. true. They do have caviar. Yeah, people yeah. got upset when uh, Old Buddy died and caught you know, right. like, oh. These guys go. They're like, yeah. <laughs> sorry for the mess. <laughs> right. uh, so, the next slide, we got, we got the band. We got, uh, so... Uh, the creatures are called Bith, mm -hmm. but the band is called Figurin Dan and the Modal Nodes. I didn't know the Figurin Dan part. Okay, yeah, I, I he's, the, he's the, the leader. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. the Modal Nodes. Uh, they are their home world is. It's interesting, and a lot of Star Wars, it's, it's easy to know what the home worlds are because they're called Bith. The home world's called Bith too. Easy. So easy. Yeah, if this is a pop quiz, you would have got that. If, if, if you're ever taking a trivia, uh, Star Wars trivia, and they ask you what's the home world, and they tell you the name of the alien, just take off a couple letters, and you probably got it right. right. Uh, Bith is, just, it is as is. Uh, the most notable thing about them is, wow, they have a very sensitive uh, sen uh, sense of hearing, and they can... Uh, in a crowded room, they can like isolate sounds, which yeah, is interesting. Yeah. So of course, they're great musicians. And they came, and the song they play has become the most recognizable, fun tap your foot song ever. Right, the cantinas. <laughs> yeah, and it's only, as far as I know, it's only in that movie. But that song, yeah, it's only in that movie. But I. If you ever play a Star Wars video game, it's always it's there. It's always, it's always there. there. We love we love us some. In fact, I play this game called Star Wars Galaxies that 
had a cantina on each planet you could go to. Uh huh. And it was played in every. It was played in every cantina <laughs> all over the galaxy. Let's well, say it's, it's the number one hit on the charts. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a bop. They love that one. It's good. Um, uh, let's see. All right. So what we got next? Ne okay, so some of the creatures that we meet come in pairs. Some of so, so uh, let's get so. Uh, oh, actually, I have uh, the modal nodes Lego. If you want to show that, um, there's a Lego version. I try to get like action figures or right. uh, Lego versions of some of them just because sometimes the cinematic shot's a little harder to get the full picture, right. but if you have something like this, yeah, you kind of see it. Look, that's how they look as Legos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. you, you, you could own this if you want to spend $360. I looked up how much the cantina set is, which you'll see at the end of this. Woo. That's too... I wish I had the money. I would... Uh, yeah. It, I feel like I would pay $200 for it, but $360. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. So there's the bit modal nodes. Uh, well, let's move on to our next pair. This guy, Walrus Man. Walrus Man, <laughs> also known as an Aqualish. That although the little uh, the, the little trick that I told you to try to remember the names, it's not going to help with him. He's from his home world is called Ando. It's not called Aqualish. Yeah. Sorry. What's his name? Oh, uh, the his his name his name name Ponda Baba. Ponda Baba. You, you'll remember him. He's the guy that accosts Luke at the bar, gives him a hard time. The guy that you can see behind him, we'll get to him in just a second, yeah. uh, they come in pairs. They are a, a, a group. They're let's, buddies. Let's see. Uh, there's a, I got another picture of uh, Ponda Baba, if we can show that. It's a nice little uh, shot of him Yeah. on, on a Saturday night. He <laughs> was maybe not as brazen. I'm, I, I have to, I'm, I'm laughing because... Uh, Someone said this about this character, and I can't unhear or unsee it. They said it, he looks like he's just swallowed a human baby, and it, the only thing left is the is the rear end sticking out. And now you'll never be able to unsee. Yeah, it. you'll never be able to unsee that. <laughs> uh, the, uh, so this, so it's this guy who Obi Wan cuts his arm off. Yeah. Um, I uh, I have some friends that have a four year old that have watched that has watched this movie several times, and every time he sees the. Uh, uh, dismembered the arm on the floor. He said, "What does he say? Jelly? It's jelly." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that's so sweet. They're just like, "Yeah, it's jelly. That's yep. what it is." Yep. Uh, so he's buddies. Uh, his partner in crime, so to speak, is Doctor uh, Cornelius <laughs> Evazon. Now look at this guy's face. You'd think, "Oh, he's definitely an alien, right?" Is he an alien? He's a human. He's a human. And a doctor, apparently. Although nothing about anything he says in that scene would lead me to believe that. He is a plastic surgeon. If we'll show our next slide, although didn't do surgery on his own face. Next slide, <laughs> look at them. There they are doing uh, up to no good. He wasn't just a plastic surgeon. He did illegal surgeries. He got uh, in trouble for him, and that's one of the reasons why he's wanted. Uh, right, on 12 systems. On 12 systems, apparently. I'm not sure what Ponda brings to this... Uh, uh, Scheme. Uh, he's very strong. Maybe he holds the people yeah. down. Yeah. While the yeah. Operation maybe so. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, the anesthesia. Yes. Uh, and then, and then I, I, I've got pictures of the action figures. If you want to show that next, um, these guys show up later, though, don't they? In, 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 in another movie, they show up in Rogue well, One. I should say earlier, right? Later? Earlier? They're technically, timeline earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Because yeah. somehow they get from uh, the planet they're on in Rogue One. And within uh, a week or so, they're on Tatooine. Hey, they got to stay cut. on the move. They're one right, 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 twelve right. systems. So, right, uh, <laughs> right. Th there's a lot of systems though, so twelve twelve's not too bad. He he acted like it was a big deal. Yeah. Um, and he gets his arm cut off by a guy who's wanted in every system. Yeah, right. Like a guy he, he <laughs> right. thought was nobody. Uh, uh, interesting. He pulls out he pulls out a lightsaber, and that just seems like a I don't know, like a, like a like I don't know. Copy. Holy. Holy moly, it's a Jedi. We're supposed to turn those guys in. I wonder how, how, maybe this is a discussion for another day, but like, what is the common workaday guy? They've probably never even seen a Jedi. So do they even? At this point, in the, I mean, this is, this is what, 20 years after? Even Old Republic, even going back to the prequels. Yeah, like, but they see, they see, they see them in the, in the hollow movies, right? Jedi are legendary throughout the uh, universe. Okay, they, know, okay. they know what the Jedi use. Okay, okay. Which is 
only the Jedi use them, which means if he uses this on a backwater, everyone in the backwater is going to go, ooh, that's a Jedi. Wow, with Grievous. Mm -hmm. oh. Only the Jedi and Grievous use them. Well, maybe this will all be explained in a couple of days. Maybe it will. That's right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're we're, we're going to know um, all, everything that we say is going to not matter. because Probably. Be, uh, they're going to be like, he's not a doctor, he's something else. Uh, <laughs> they'll probably keep that. Yeah. Um, all right, our next pair, uh, I'm, I'm going to show one at a time, though. Uh, this guy, the species is called a Talz, T-A-L-Z, Homeworld, is it also Talz? Let me see, I got notes here. Homeworld is, oh, did I not write it down? Oh, Alzok, A-L-Z-O-K. -A -A so, again, maybe, maybe my little trivia trick is not as helpful as right. I thought. I've undermined it <laughs> twice already. Um, did he have a, what, what was his pre-name name? I, it, we, he didn't have one. He didn't have one. His the, name, only, the only ones who got weird prenames are ones that action figures came out for. Ah. Otherwise, they were named. They, they just remained nameless background creatures in the he cantina. He didn't get a name. That's didn't too get bad. A name. Well, he's got a name now. His name is Muff Tack. Probably when that novel came <laughs> probably, out. Probably. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Muff Tack. Um, he's from the world that he's from is a snow-covered world. Evidently, he was orphaned here. Oh. Although the timeline of this is a little problematic. Uh, this novel says that he was orphaned and, and, and or, or orphaned or abandoned on Tatooine, which was a miserable place for someone who's from an icy home. Right. Home. When another, when one of the Clone Wars shows came out, or Rebel, I can't remember which one, a, a, a show that came out after the prequels before the Disney movies, mm -hmm. it was solidified that this that this planet was not contacted by the rest of the galaxy until the Clone Wars. Hmm. So it's interesting that in that, what, 20, 15 years? He got yeah, it's like yeah. 20, 25 years before the Battle of Yavin. So. I guess that's enough time. For, I guess. For, uh, I don't know, they must have really... Been, he must be young then. He must be. Yeah, um, youngish. Uh, they've, got four, they've got two sets of eyes. They've got uh, smaller eyes that they use to see during the daytime, larger eyes to see at night, which is kind of cool. Right. Uh, takes him more like that way. Uh, he's got a counterpart... Uh, if we can show the next slide, his counterpart is this little lady. Oh. She's a lady. Her okay. name is Kabe. She is a Shadra Fan. She's from the planet Chad or Shad. Not sure how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. that, that's her home world. They're these little, uh, they look like, honestly, they look like a bat. They look like wings. a bat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they apparently sleep two hours a night and are very industrious. And poor, poor Kabe was also orphaned wow. here. But Muff Tack took her in. Isn't that so sweet? That is very sweet. Although I read a little bit, I didn't commit any of this to memory, but I read a little bit. Um, Kabe seems like a little bit of a troublemaker and is maybe more trouble than uh, Muff Tack wanted. I don't know, but they seem to... They seem to get along? Yeah, they seem to get along. <laughs> uh, they, you don't see them on screen together in this scene, so this right. is obviously something that, that they put together when this um, novel came out. Right. Uh, but that's, that's kind of cool. That's okay, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Um, all right, next, I think we got the action figures of, of the two of them. Right. So this was obviously solidified them as a pair when this when this action figure was sold. Right. Because they were like, hey, we got this book. Right, and, and, and that's what's so, so neat is that the ones I've got here are the only Cantina figures that came out in the vintage series. Right. Since then, since new figures have been coming out, every single critter, person, thing in the Cantina has their own figure, every one of them. Yes, and have and they have names. Right. Kabe right. and Muptak. Uh, okay, next we got, I think, was he Devil Man? No. No. Uh, the the Arcona, uh, who... Yeah, da Dazon? Something yeah, like Hem that. Yeah, Hem Dazon is his name. We, he's probably, I think I recall, the first thing we see when we get into he the is. He is. His head's the one that pops yeah, up. Like, yeah. Um, okay. His eyes are not supposed to be yellow like that. It's something yeah. like jaundice that he has. Oh, from, this is the story? Yes, from yeah. drinking this, <laughs> this beverage, which is made of, how rude, Rodian blood, among other things, which seems, yeah, which seems knows, weird. Yeah. There's literally a Rodian who walks into this bar. If you, yeah. Apparently, if you drink too much of this stuff, it'll make your eyes glowing yellow, and that's why he looks that way. It's not because that's the way they look. Oh, the backstories. Homeworld. Yeah. Kona, our Kona, Kona. My right. little cheat yeah. uh, helps a little bit with that one. Um, yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah. Who we got next? I think. Oh, I, I think we have an action figure next. Right. Again. See, that's what I'm saying. They, they made cool yeah. action figures. Yeah, he's got a cool everything. little action figure. 
All right, next, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this guy's name. He's a, I know he's a Davronian. He's a Davronian. Did he have a pre-name name? He did not. He did not. Maybe Devil Man, I don't know. Um, I read that there's some, there's some controversy over whether this mask was made for the movie. It wasn't. Many of these masks and costumes that you see in the cantina were used from older movies. Like The, the, one the guy that, claimed that he made it. But, well, he made some, well, yes, there were some additions made to an existing mask is what some people think. Okay. And like the, it didn't make it into the special editions, but there's also a, a werewolf mask in the cantina. Yes. Right? Uh, there's, there's lots of, of things, but th what's interesting about this character is he's in, he's, uh, he's shown a couple of times, uh -huh. and, and you're, you've probably got slides on this, uh, he's so striking that, um, in some of the recent series, there are now Daver there are other Davronians. Yeah, you see them. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which you is see, pretty and, cool. And they're all mean, and they're all muscles. And this guy's a scumbag. He's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's <laughs> apparently a war criminal. Um, he's got a name I cannot pronounce. I'm not even going to try. Well, I, actually, I will try. Cardu Su Malak. Oh. That's just me taking a stab at it. But <laughs> he had an alias that he went by that I think... I was getting a little confused when I, when I was trying to find a picture of the action figure because it was first marketed under his alias, Labria, L-A-B-R-I-A. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard that. Yeah, that was, his, that was his fake name that he was using so no one would know he was a war criminal. Right. Because he's wanted on Untold Systems, too, although he didn't, he didn't boast about it. So he's hiding out on Tatooine. He's hiding out on Tatooine with a fake name. It's a good place to hide out, right? Yeah, right, yeah, because uh, everybody and nobody's there. Right. Um, <laughs> Uh, female Davronians don't have horns, and they have a full head of hair, mm -hmm. apparently. Davronians, uh, if, if they're male, they have horns, and they, they, they don't have hair on top of their head. They can. Some of them grow a little little scruff beard or sideburns. Yeah, I saw some pictures of some of them that had sideburns. This guy does not. He's uh, clean-shaven. Um, they are uniquely resistant to toxins and poisons. They have, like, three livers and stuff wow. and can process stuff. And also, kind of owing to his appearance, uh, you can... Flamethrower, this guy, he's not going to get hurt. Uh, the, very resistant to fire. You see that in The Mandalorian. Do you? I don't remember that. I think so, yeah. I have to go back and rewatch yeah. I rewatched it recently. I don't remember that. Isn't, okay. that, isn't that the guy on the uh, Rebel prison cruiser? Somebody in the chat. Played by, yeah, this, he's played uh, by the um, uh, Tim, uh, John oh, Clancy. Clancy Brown. John Clancy. <laughs> Clancy Brown. He's Tom played Clancy. by Clancy Brown. Uh, um, yeah, that's, that's, but it's very cool to see one moving around and being a, a mean bad guy. I got to go back and rewatch that. Yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next, I think we have. Oh, we have another. You get more yeah, Legos. I have a Lego. Of yeah, him. more Legos. Uh, of course. You wouldn't, you know, you got to see the Lego, see him in his full form. But next, we have the. What was this called? Oh, hem Hammerhead. Hammerhead. This guy. Uh, As in Hammerhead Shark. They're yeah. known as Ithorians, I-T-H, Ithorians. My trick does work for this one. The planet's called Ithor, and his name is Momau Nadon. Now, there's a strong culture of pacifism on Ithorian, or on, on Ithor, excuse me. Um, they're very committed to being nonviolent, but they will get involved when they need to. Mm -hmm. uh, this particular guy, he was exiled. He was kicked off the planet because they apparently have a lot of, they're big into agriculture. They have a lot right. of like secret agricultural practices. Their starships, like the capital ships, they have like forests and biomes within right. them, which is pretty cool. Um, none of the other starships are presented that way. We've never seen that on screen though. I would love to see that. Yeah. Um, uh, he evidently, I don't know, I don't have a lot of details on this, but in order to save the planet, don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. He went against the wishes of his people and gave some of those secrets to the Empire. Well, so. he's a he's a botanist. Yes. Okay, and, and see, his story, I remember, because it was my favorite one from Tales from the Mos Eisley well, Cantina. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's the background. So that's just the thing. They're still using the story, uh, but he's a botanist. And I think they did that kind of as a clever hob, but it really makes sense. If this is a place on Tatooine to get away from everything in this cantina is a wretched hive of scum and villainy. Here in the corner you have a botanist. A gardener. A gardener, right? Yeah. Hiding out because he's done horrible things and he's trying to escape from his past. And that's, that's such a classic story. Did the secret garden come up in the story? Yes. 
Okay, yes. yeah, he has, to the south of Moss Eisley, he has a secret garden. So if you can imagine being on the desert planet, if you find it, there's just a lush, beautiful right. garden. And it's secret garden. because he uses too much water. Oh. Right? He, that's what he, he deals in black market stuff, but not for his own personal monetary gain. He does it so that he can buy enough water to keep his garden going. Wow, this guy needs a movie. We need a TV I show. I know, all right. He, it, he does. He does. Athorians have a cool thing about them. They have they have two they have two mouths on the side of of, of their neck. They, they they don't speak from here. They they speak from here. Um, actually, if you go to the next slide, if if you watched uh, Boba Fett, this is the mayor of Mos of of Mos Espa, Mayor Mock Shays. Shay Chaz. Mock Shays. Mock Shays. Mock Shays. Um, he uses this little device to translate for him, a vocabulator, is that what they yeah, call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, did, did you get the joke in Book of Boba Fett? Mayor Mock Shies? No, what's the joke? Mayor McCheese. Is that, a, is that for real? Yes. Who told you that? It, it's right. It, it, you just listen to it. That's, uh, that's the creators of that show. They're sneaking in all kinds of fun little stuff. Mayor McCheese. All Mayor right. Mayor McShaz. You, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Mayor McCheese. Uh, and, uh, you know, although it's that's funny. A, that's a, yeah, that's Favreau and Filoni at work right there. Maybe there's a reason he doesn't live on Ithor, because, you know, they're described as pacifists. Now, he never does anything violent, but he's a shrewd guy. He's, yes. Yeah. Uh, I like A, sh a character. shady character. A shady yes. character. Yeah, yeah. He, for, for the longest time, wouldn't even, uh, wouldn't even entertain a meeting with Boba Fett. Right, right. Um, I loved his, uh, the Twi'lek uh, that works for him. That, yes. That, that, I love that character. I, know, he's I so love good. that actor. <laughs> I, I, I love him. Uh, didn't include him in this. Sorry, guys. Because I, I don't think they... I don't know that came from later, from yeah, the, right. later movie, but um, all right. Next, I I almost didn't include Greedo in this. I uh, literally I had to add him today because I forgot. I was like, how you did forgot I forget or you just Greedo? didn't want to? Yeah, no, I just forgot. Uh, Greedo is a Rodian. Rodian. Uh, his full name is Greedo Tetsu Junior. He's a junior. What uh, interesting? <laughs> yeah, I wonder if the, I wonder if it's he's the junior of the one in episode one, or if that's supposed to be him. You know, because cause he knows Anakin. He and Anakin are little buddies. I wonder. I don't know which one is which. I should. Maybe remember. someone watching If knows. this had been a more thoroughly researched presentation, I wouldn't have the answer to that question, Glenn. I'm sorry. I thought right. I let you down. Uh, but yeah, interesting. He's, okay, so their home world's the planet, Rhodia. They're supposed to be skilled bounty hunters, although Greedo doesn't really show himself to be that. No. He lives for about... Three minutes on screen. <laughs> right. um, and, and, and let's be very clear. We totally agree on this, as do yeah. most people. Han did shoot first. Well, some people haven't even been presented with the, the option. The, the alternative? Yeah. 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 Uh, so you, older fans will know this. Some of the younger fans won't. Um, when the uh, movies were released as a box set VHS set in 1997? Something like that. Late 90s. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you could buy them, you know, well, for a while there, there wasn't home video, but in the 80s home video came, and they were released on home video. Right. You, you know, you, and if you bought it on home video before 97 or so, you saw the movie that you saw in, in theaters. theaters. Right. If, if you had gone to see it when it came out. In 97, they decided to, I guess, leading up to the prequels coming out, they made some changes. Special edition. Yeah, and they've, they've made changes over the years each time they've sort of released them. Right. But a big change came in, in this one, and it is, in, that, in the scene, as you would have seen it if you went to see it in theaters, there's the discussion, you know, discussion. Greedo pulls the gun on... And, and Greedo's pointing the gun at him straight up. Yeah, yeah. He's right? got him, he's got him uh, where he wants him, and, and they're arguing, and he says, over my dead body, Han says... And then in the original movie, Han shoots him. Just kind of sneaky, pulls yeah. his gun, shoots him under the table. Yeah, just shoots him. Which is, I think, understandable. And, f yeah. I, f it, does, it doesn't make him a bad guy. It makes him... Yeah. That makes him Han Solo. I mean, it was self -def I mean, you know, he's got a gun on you. Right. And he... You don't want them to shoot first if you're in that situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and he was... Yeah, so... The decision was made to edit the scene so that Han's action was unambiguously self-defense 
Right. By having Greedo shoot first. First. And miss by about a foot and a half from four feet away. Maybe three feet. I away? think they even edit him so he so so Han like moves. Right, a it little looks bit. so bad. It looks weird. It does look a little weird. And but you know what? You can look this clip up if you want to. Um, happy birthday! But we but we digress. Oh, is it Miss? P oh, it's Frank Oz's birthday. Oh, oh, happy birthday, Frank Oz. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, one of our favorites. Uh, you know, uh, if you don't know who Frank Oz is. Um, I won't say you shouldn't be watching this year. <laughs> Frank Oz played Yoda. He also uh, was very involved in Jim Henson. Right, Love Puppets. And, yes. uh, uh, he's Miss Piggy. He's uh, Bert or Ernie, I don't know which. He's Miss Piggy. I think he's I think he's uh, uh, Bert. Yeah, he also directed Little Shop of Horrors, if yes. you've ever seen that. That was uh, one of his feature films that he made. Um, what's left? Oh, Rodian. So, yeah, so, Rodian. so Greedo, Rodian... Um, they show up a little bit, but they seem to have had their heyday, and they tend to only be background characters in more recent iterations of Star Wars. Yeah, or if you play if you play Star Wars video games, you shoot Rodians a lot. Cause right, you know, right. Bad guy. Um, but that's one thing I've enjoyed is so many of these creatures from the cantina, or at least their species, they're pulling them out and using them a lot of different places. Yeah, yeah. In the series and in you know in some of the prequels and things like that, it kind of gives that depth to the universe. Yeah, the, that 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 originally was just a we got to have guys in the cantina, aliens in the cantina. Yeah, one of the the cool. I mean, I think it was when I was a kid. I really liked that when the prequels came out, all the new aliens. I yeah, thought, I, I really like that. Right. But as I've gotten older, when some of the new stuff has come out, I really appreciated. That they avoid, when possible, introducing a new alien, and they just use what you've seen before. Absolutely, and yeah. I think that's cool. I think right. that really it's makes a continuity. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, it's cool that the mayor of Mos Espa is an authorian. It's cool that he has a Twi'lek that works for him too. It's right. cool. I don't know. Just that stuff is. Yeah, it's cool. I think it's right. uh, there's a lot of I can't remember who is it these these guys Aqualish Aqu the Aqualish there's a whole little Aqualish gang that, that Boba Fett has to deal with yeah in fact oh slash the Mandalorian yeah uh, these guys are pretty prominently featured in, in the prequels they're some they're one of the planets that joined Dooku's Confederate of Independent Systems right they really blew up in their face when Darth Vader showed up and killed them all at the Mustafar meetup right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, they apparently that they learned uh, at least the planet's regime, and they joined the rebellion. They're like, eh. right, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so but yeah, so we can go uh, to you know to these Legos, match Lego. So do you have the Cantina Lego? I don't own it. No, I, I, I don't. I'm not made of money, but I, I did. <laughs> I did, uh, I did uh, get some images of it, and it's cool. Um, so it. It opens and closes. It's on joints. So right. this is what it looks like from the exterior. And it's not exactly to scale as what it would be in in the movie. Right. Because, you know, that'd be huge. Right. But, you know, it opens up and you can see the all the characters that we've mentioned and some of the ones that we have not mentioned right. are featured here. I, I think there was one that I overlooked. There was there was a, a, a the one that looks like a Trandoshan that's not. Uh, Trandoshan, if... Right. Uh, I... I won't get into what a Trandoshan is, uh, but <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think that I think there's one more. Th th there's like a lineup shot of the different patrons. Uh, so there's the interior shot, right? Of uh, and then there's a shot of the patrons. So we got um, the Davarian. Yeah, we've got Davronian. The Davronian. Yeah. Uh, we've got what's not a Trandoshan, which I definitely thought was a Trandoshan. Right. They're closely related, but I didn't. I didn't pull that image for this. Uh, I, is that Han? Is that supposed to be Han? The, the, I can't tell. I think it's supposed to be Han. Maybe. Yeah. Then we got the Athorian. Then we got the Shadrafan. All you know. So it's right. Very cool. Right. Um, we're at the hour. We, we're at the hour, but you know, I think it, we can go a little bit longer because I want to see. I want to see what kind of comments and. And questions we've got in the chat. People have been talking. We haven't been keeping up I know, with it as much as we could. Naughty us, but, um, but but there's so much. I mean, Tatooine. You know, the, I guess I guess to sum up, do you want to sum up Tatooine? It, it's it's again, it may be far away from the bright center, but so much of the story revolves around it. It's where Anakin to become Darth Vader was the Skywalker clan. The central, one of the central families of the entire it's home. galaxy. It's home, and we always want to go back home. And you know, and yeah, and and even the the Disney sequels, for all that they are, ends 
right here on this on this scene behind us, this the Lars slash Skywalker homestead. Mm-hmm. Right, it sort of begins the the whole saga begins and ends right there in the sands of Tatooine. And uh, if that doesn't tell you how central, it's the bookend, right? That's yeah. that's what makes the series. So those those faraway desert planets, the most fun seems to be had on them. Do you know how they achieve the shot of the two suns? Do they just super? Do they it, just it was, it was two? It, yeah. It's it's two exposures. It was it was that simple. It looks really good. Yeah. 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 Um, and you know, of of course, uh, most of the tattooing, the exterior tattooing scenes, were filmed uh, in Death Valley, or in Tunisia. Uh, or in Tunisia. Yeah. So, which is interesting, California and all the way in North Africa. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> was, and the cantina scene was shot in two different places: one in Elstree Studios and one in Los Angeles, and they squished. Oh, the yeah. shots together. You, you can look this up if 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 you look up on YouTube. There is a very grainy black and white copy. I don't know how somebody got their hands on it, but they basically took a lot of unused footage from the cantina shoot and stitched it together, making like a three-minute scene, a seven or eight-minute yeah. scene. Yeah. Well, and yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, you, we you, we we discussed this earlier. So this scene was so important to Lucas. That he just kept, like I said, he shot it in two different places, and he just kept shooting and kept shooting. And in, in his edit, there's so much footage in the cantina that really is just background and B-roll of cool aliens. Uh-huh. And when they're going through it, and it's like, George, you, there's there's too much. This isn't moving the story. You're lingering on just weird faces, and that's not going to sell well. They There were people at the studio who genuinely thought that, it was American gonna... audiences weren't ready for this. Wow! Because it was so out there. Well, he probably, in their defense, he probably wanted a lot more than what an audience may have put up with. Uh, you're right. I mean, right. like, but thank God he did. Yeah. If right? he if if he had put that seven minute scene that I watched on YouTube, which you can look up if you want. Oh, sure. To, yeah. It's sn- kind of a snoozer. <laughs> yeah, snores. It loses its magic. Yeah. Although it is cool when you watch it because the 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 post production audio is not over it. When Greedo is talking, it's the human voice of the actor in the mask. The that, actor, that's well, cool. yes, it's a female actor. Oh, that I does plays Greedo. I didn't know that. There's a uh, there's there's a, a production still that someone shot of the. They basically were having to find someone skinny enough to fit in the in the costume that the costume shop had made. Ah. And there's a shot where from her ankles down, she's just wearing pumps. <laughs> that's so cool. Because that's the comfiest shoe she had on the on the set. So uh, okay, well, well, okay, let's yeah, get us some let's, let's, go let's get the, some chats. Uh, yeah, and and Guada, you may have to to help us out here if you've been keeping up with it and and seeing what some of the interesting well, comments and questions were. If, if you haven't, that's okay. If you want, if you have a something that you want to say now, now's the time to do it because I uh, cause y'all been talking for a while. <laughs> right. uh, I did I did hear uh, somebody made a comment that uh, I, I said that I liked some of the the new aliens in the prequels. Uh, except for Jar Jar? Question mark. Yes, except for Jar Jar. Um, not crazy about Jar Jar. You know, I can't help it. He's been growing on me. Yeah. And, and you know why? Why? Because, because my son. Because oh, he's been. Because those, as he said, as as we've said, those those were his Star Wars movies. Yeah. Right. And because I'm seeing it through his eyes, it's not like I'm saying Jar Jar is the Lawrence Olivier of the prequels by any stretch of the imagination. But he he. Has bugged me less, I guess is, and now it's almost like a nostalgia thing. He still is what he is. Oh, we got a question about pod racing. Yes, oh, yeah. I actually was going to include a slide about pod racing that I uh, cut. So, pod racing, as far as I, so similar racing goes on elsewhere, but pod racing is a Tatooine thing, and it is uh, right. Am I yeah, right? I, th- I think they have it some other places, but it is usually tied to the huts. Yes, the huts are like the. The Huts are the NASCAR sponsors of the galaxy. Yeah, so <laughs> the Huts show up on Tatooine, and they're like, uh, "We have this holiday that is now going to be observed on Tatooine, and it's Bunta Bunta's Eve." Bunta Eve, yeah. Is it Bunta's or Bunta? I don't know. I just always I think it was Bunta. I think it's Bunta's. I think I okay. I, I, I think I looked at Bunta's Eve, which celebrates something pretty awful. I read the, it was basically them solidifying their hold as a slaveholding power in, in the galaxy. Hooray. It's a celebration of some con- some conquest some, of some theirs. Some past person. Yeah. yeah. But hey, it's a lot of fun. They uh, they have, a, every year on, on Bunta's Eve, they have a race called the Bunta Classic, mm-hmm. which is a big, big deal. 
And that is what in episode one Anakin is looking to win, and he's not been able to win yet. Right, right. He keeps crashing things, and, and he hasn't had a lot of luck. And and you know what? The um, All of our indigenous peoples make a, make an appearance in those pod races, uh-huh. right? Because the, they have to go way, way out, right? To, to make, yeah. Because they go fast. The sand people show so up. The yeah, sand yeah, people yeah. are taken. Again, we're still on the sand people are just backwards hillbilly awful people because they're taking pot shots at the pod racers as they go by is for fun. Yeah. And the Jawas are there just for a second, you know, and they give their classic as the as the things fly by. So so there is a presence there yeah. of the sand people and the Jawas. Somebody asked a question, what is the background of the creature that looked like a praying mantis? Ooh, do you know what they're referring to? I do. Um but I don't know what... Is it what, in the cantina? It is. Yeah, there's... A, it, just for a second, it's kind of got a, like a wide head looking thing, but I don't know what the background is. Um, there were a couple... There were a couple of, uh, of creatures that Lucas ended up rejecting because he thought... Uh, this is not one of them, but he, because they looked too human, right? Hmm. He had a couple of different designers giving him, giving him aliens for the cantina, and he was looking for out there stuff. He didn't want Star Trek. Yeah, he didn't want Star yeah, Trek yeah, yeah. where it's just humans with some some you know things. No on No shade their face. on Star Trek. We like Star Trek. We love Star Trek. Yeah, but this is about this is May twenty fifth. Somebody in the chat alluded to the uh, Jar Jar is a Sith Lord theory, which I think is cute and funny. I, it, I, it, I, 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 we desperately, you know, maybe we'll find something out about that this coming Friday too. But I don't, it is a very interesting theory because when you start looking at it, it almost makes sense. It almost make almost makes the sense. The selling point of the eyes, like I know that it's probably a design coincidence, but man, uh, they could have deliberately avoided that. But right. you know, right. hey, whatever. Right. Um, what else we got? Uh, I like Georgia. A, oh. a question that you probably can't see in the group chat. This is from yeah. Melissa Manning. It was a bit early on. And she was wondering if the Jabba's Palace is actually a secret tattoo parlor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, we, so yes, we, we, we did settle. We, we, we settled that, disp- uh, that dispute for uh, uh, Melissa in the group chat. She, she, she asked if it was secretly a, a, a tattoo parlor. Now we know that it was the temple of the Bomar monks who right. showed up. The little guys. It's yes. their temple. It's still their temple. It's not. It's Jabba's palace slash Bomar temple. Right. It, it is both. Um, but and it, even future denizens of the palace allow the Bomar, Bomar monks to remain there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they. So it's know, probably not only one of the uh, oldest pay, structures. It's they the pay oldest. rents. They clean up after themselves. Right. They, you know, as a good monk should. They're, they're good roommates. Good monks. As a good monk should. Is that Ross the lizard smoking the hookah? Yeah. It, uh, so. Um, so, the movie gets a disclaimer for depicting de- tobacco use because of the presence of what looks like hookah. But, you know, right. it's Star Wars. What are they smoking? I don't know. Um, right. But it, it has a disclaimer if you pull it up on Disney+. Plus. Tobacco, oh, yeah, smoking, yes. Yeah, tobacco depiction in, in the movie. Uh, right. We destroy an entire world of, of souls, but there's also smoking. There is also um, smoking, yeah. L- look out. And, and th- that guy also has a story, too, in the, in the book, which, of course, I can't remember what it was right now. That's great. Uh, but it's, I mean, it's, and you know, it's just, some, some of them have longer and shorter stories stories than others. Uh, Mama Nadal has the longest story in the, in the book. But he's there, uh, there's two women, two human, I think they're human women, who look almost like twins yeah, uh, sister, in the cantina. They're bounty hunter sisters they're, they're, they're like mercenary something assassin type type. I didn't type include ladies. them because they weren't aliens. I wanted well, to focus yeah, on aliens. Well, yeah, exactly, so. exactly. But yeah. there's, um, and you know, like I said, I think, well, the map you showed at first with all the population densities, we're in, in Moss Eisley. Moss Espa is the biggest town, yeah. biggest settlement on Tatooine. Moss Eisley, I think, is up there. Yeah. I think and it may it's be a backwater, which, yeah. which should show you just how much of a backwater this planet is if Moss, Moss Eisley is the second or third most populous town on the planet. I also read that only a very small part of the planet is actually habitable. So right. it's plausible that all these things are actually pretty close together. Right, yeah, right, so, right. So, like, because I, I was wondering when I'm watching Boba Fett riding a path, I was just like, how long is it going to take him to get anywhere? Um, right, because those things move pretty slow. Yeah, but and I was always like, always okay. in single file. <laughs> Hide their numbers. <laughs> Can you elaborate on the history of moisture farming, please? Um, no, I can't elaborate yeah, well, on the history other I mean, than... Well, I mean, that's the, you know, 
whether or not Tatooine was once an all-water planet, it's not now. Yeah. And water is, of course, the most precious resource. Uh, and I'm sure that Tatooine probably imports water. Um, can we see one in this picture? There's something. No, there's no, not. There, yeah, Evaporators. But, right. They, yeah. You see these things uh, on, on, on on the Lars homestead and, and elsewhere in the... They're like a series of tubes. Yeah, like they, they look like, like these little pylon go. things, and sometimes they even like have like little lights on them. Those are evaporators. They take moi- they take moisture what? From all the, the moisture in from the air. Well, and the, here's what's interesting is that that's actually based on real science, oh. right? Because remember, I said we couldn't say anything about it, and here, I, we, are, here we are. I can talk about it. anything forever. Yeah. Um, so there is there's always moisture in the air, even in the desert. And at night, of course, in the desert, it gets very, very cold. And as the things heat up, if you have a certain... That's, that's how the creatures who are in the desert can get water because there's condensation, right? Va- vapor, water vapor and condensation. Uh, because uh, one of the survival skills you can use in the desert is you can dig a hole in the desert and put rocks down there and then put a plastic drape over this hole... And as this cools off slower than the, than the um, heat above, the, the air above, water forms on the outside of that piece of plastic. Ah. And, it, and if you put a rock in the middle, it can drain down. Now, that's a very primitive version. I'm assuming that Star Wars technology means that those moisture evaporators can pull in much more water yeah, from they the atmosphere. Make a living. And that's how you make a living, right? Yeah. I'm sure uh, that water is the largest legal... Uh, production on on Tatooine, which is what the you know what the um, and uh, uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru do. They they farm water. Oh, I meant to mention. Somebody asked about rancors. I meant to mention rancors oh, in yes. our discussion of creatures. I didn't mention them because no, rancors are not indigenous to this planet. They are from a planet called Dathomir, and they're on Dathomir. Dathomir has uh uh. Uh, it's basically a scary jungle swamp, scary no. planet. Right. And the the Zabrax are from there. Zabrax, you've seen one. You didn't know he was a Zabrak. Darth Maul is a Zabrak. Darth Maul is a Zabrak. They have they have horns all over their head. They are usually anywhere between the color red and the color like like a tan, almost like human, uh, like a a pale human complexion. Um, which means. Everywhere on Darth, on Darth Maul's body that is black, that is a tattoo. His skin is red. Interesting. The, the black is the tattoo. His skin is red. And it makes now that you say that, of course, of course, Darth Maul and a Rancor come from the same planet. Right. Yes. Uh, the the biggest the, the the big movers on on Dathomir are the Night Sisters. They are witches. They they use the Force in a tradition that is not the same as the Jedi tradition, and mm-hmm. they are depicted as being evil. I don't know if that's actually true, right. uh, but they are the dominant. It, it's a matriarchal planet. They well, they run the show. Remember how the, the Jedi see things. If you don't use the Force the way they do, you are heretical. That's right, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, the Night Sisters are pretty interesting. If you uh, So that's where Rancors come from. Uh, they don't belong on Tatooine. People just keep bringing them there. <laughs> um, right. One wasn't enough. If you've watched uh, Boba Fett... Uh, there's, you're going to see another one if you haven't watched it yet. Right. Uh, but right. yeah, Night Sisters are cool. There, there's a cool book, and I don't, you know, it's hard to know how, how much of this is canon anymore. Um, when uh, Wizards of the Coast, who publish D and D, they had a contract for a Star Wars game for many years, and they published a book called Jedi Academy. Mm-hmm. And one of the sections in the book is about other Force traditions. And there's like a whole section about it, and there's a whole section about Night Sisters, and it's. It's very interesting. It's very cool that, uh, that that's a thing. I wish there should be a movie uh, about it. But That would be cool. That would yeah. be cool. See, in like the novelization of this that came out in 77 uh, starts off with a quote from the Journal of the Wills. And I read that. And I'm like, no one knew what that was then. It was just... What is that? Well, <laughs> I'm still not sure, but the Wills, W-H-I-L-L-S... And as we find out, not until uh, Rogue One, do you remember the the blind martial artist guy? He yeah. is a keeper of the wills. Oh. And so at that temple, um, 
where they're taking the crystals out, there is apparently another, like a quasi-monastic order, that understands the force and is force-sensitive but cannot use the force. They can sense it. And, and as one of the keepers of that, that they, they worked with the Jedi, but were not of the Jedi. And so another example of taking little bitty snippets that just popped out of Lucas and his cohort's imagination and turning it into canonical things. That's interesting. Cool. Over cool. 40 years, 35 years. Golly, by my old. Uh, someone asked, do you think their water prices match our present gas prices? Uh, We're getting might, there. That might be, <laughs> yeah, it might be worse. I don't know. That, right. that, that, that's actually one of the, the, the subplots on Boba Fett is the availability and cost of water of being, water. being gouged. Right. Um, right. So I hope that's not a spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Water conflict. Um, let's see. You know what? Real wars and struggles over uh, through history, in real history, and through pretend space history, are always about the resources. Yeah, yeah. Always about the resources. All right. Any more questions? So yeah, we're sorry, folks. We're kind of having to look. We're squinting at this little screen here um, that we're looking at. Guada, have we missed anything big? I'd love people for you asked. both to do more segments like this about other movies and franchises. Man, that would be fun. It would be fun. I mean, you know, I don't know how much the History Center will indulge going outside of the scope of... Uh... Well, we, we, you know what? We do it every once in a while. Uh-huh. Uh, and you want to know the reason we do it? Why? Because I'm the director and I want to. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know if there are any board members watching this, but you know what? This is fun, and and it, you don't have to stretch too far to kind of fit this in. This is, Star Wars is art. It is literature. It is a reflection on our society, and I know one of my former professors at UNG has actually taught an entire class on the relationship of the narrative of Star Wars with history, the myth and the history of Star Wars. There you go. So to answer that question, we'll absolutely be We really should. You know what we haven't done? We need to see if there's a Star Trek day. I'm sure there is. There absolutely should, you should do a Star Trek. I I could, I'd be willing to co-host that with you, although I definitely can't hang uh, on a Star Trek discussion like I can on a Star Wars discussion. But But you know what he does watch? He watches Alfred Hitchcock like crazy. I do. There's a podcast. That there is, you, yes, we've yeah. already done a podcast. Yeah, we did a podcast on that. It's pretty good. We did two, didn't we? Didn't we make it into two parts? No, I think we Was it just one? Just okay. A, like a, a big, long one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we. I mean, we both love movies, and, and people love movies. We've talked about, um, we could go into Star Wars for forever. Oh, you know what? Something uh, that I attended recently, I don't know if I told you this, Um Occasionally, orchestras will do like a watch the movie. We'll play the. Score. Oh yes! I saw Return of the Jedi, oh. Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Oh, but that was cool. A very good friend of mine, who's the same person who played a Jawa at Disney World. Oh yeah. Took me. It was very nice. Did you tear up because it was beautiful? Because I probably would I have. did tear up. Yes. I mean, there, there were times I felt like such a kid. Oh, when Glenn, when they played. Because the first thing that you hear in a Star in, in a classic Star Wars movie is 20th Century Fox theme. Yep. When they played it, we all just bawled. Oh my God! Just the warmth. Yes. Oh, just like basking in the glow. Because oh. if you start watching this stuff young enough, you think that is the beginning of the Star Wars theme. Yeah. <laughs> I did for years. Yeah. And 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 it is. It is. Uh, it n- is. But not for the newer ones. But, um, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe Disney could buy that. Yeah, um, that would that would be cool. Yeah, that just do cool. the Disney Castle over the same music. Right. That'd be, that'd be I don't, can we say Disney? Or are they going to bleep us out of YouTube? We'll I see. Don't think so? We can say we can say whatever we want. Okay. Okay. <laughs> whatever we want. Whatever we want. Yes. Well, um, well, let's see what time we're we're at we're at seven twenty. So we should, over. so we should probably start wrapping things up. Um, Gosh, we're so glad that you joined us. It looks like we've got a lot of people that have been watching this because people love Star Wars. People love Star Wars. Uh, we love Star Wars, and this is our third year doing a, a Star Wars thing. Mm-hmm. Star yeah. Wars thing. We'll come up with, I don't know, because so the, the first two years we kind of just ran, well, I, I got to be honest with you all, didn't prepare it. A thing. I mean, I, I I think you brought your toys. <laughs> I always bring the toys. I didn't, I didn't even I didn't even put images together. Lebo had to put images together last minute. This time I put images together and we picked a a, a specific topic, which is what we'll do right. I think going forward. Right. Uh, we'll we'll just pick something that people want to hear more about. 
Right. Um, well, and I'll tell you what, to that end, if you want, if you guys watch it uh, now or if you're watching it later after it's, after it's aired, either put something in the chat now of topics you think we could cover that would be fun along these lines, or if it's later, just send an email to info at negahc.org with your ideas because honestly, sometimes coming up with the themes is, is kind of difficult, believe it or not, because we could talk forever. But we kind of want to respond to our audiences too. Yeah, this one was easy though because the Obi Wan show coming out, I was like, Obi- I was like, oh really yeah, easy, yeah, easy. Because I, I, yeah, the, I'd say the the majority of it's going to be on on Tatooine, which is fine. It's so, uh, Friday night. It's 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 going to be available. At least I don't. Is the whole thing going to just be? No. Available? So so originally it was going to air tonight yeah. on Star Wars Day, but they moved it two days. I'm no one knows why. But as a sop to the fans, they're showing two episodes on Friday. Okay. Of That's the weird. six. Of yeah, the yeah, six. Yeah. Okay. And then they're going to release them uh, every week thereafter for, until they get to the to episode six. Yeah. So, so uh, be getting ready. Be re-watching some st- get, get You know, yeah. wet your whistle. Get it ready for some uh, great new Star Wars content. Um, right. Ewan McGregor. Can't go wrong. Exactly. That's the thing. It's like no matter what, it's going to have Ewan McGregor as Obi Wan. And we, I don't think it's any secret that Darth Maul is going to make an appearance. I mean, you hear his, uh, you see him in the trailer, or you hear right. him. Right. And someone else was in the trailer too. Yeah. I don't think it's spoilers to say if it's in the trailer. If but it was in the trailer. Little Darth Vader. Darth Vader. Mm. Played by Hayden Christensen. Mm. So that's what's going to be interesting. Oh. That's going to be very interesting to watch those two. That is interesting. All right. We've gone too long, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for indulging us. Uh, and thanks for following the History Center. Tell your friends. Send us those recommendations. And until we see you again talking about real history or super fun pretend stuff, stay safe and take care. And may the Force be with you. May the Force be with us all. <laughs>